Hello again, GoGrowers. Today we have a much requested video regarding the GoGrow app. We'll go through the app page by page so you can get a sense of its functionality and how it interacts with the GoGrow Smart Scooter. Now this will be a bit of a longer video, so if you want to know more about a specific section, I will place bookmarks in the information below. Now if you haven't checked it out, GoGrow CEO Horace Luke recently held a press conference introducing the 2018 model year GoGrow 1 series and the new GoGrow 2 series. He also introduced the iQ 4.0 scooter software update, which will be coming to GoGrow and the app at the end of this year. The update will include a host of new features, which I'll review when it comes out. Now during the presentation, Horace uses both Mandarin and English, so if you don't speak Mandarin, you can still get the gist of his presentation. But the app version that we'll be looking at today is 1.8.1, .1, which was released on January 26, 2017. So let's get to the app. We'll begin here on the home page. Here we are presented with some GoGrow news and information that you can see uh, scrolling by, followed by the current battery level of the scooter based on its last connection, a link that will open Apple Maps and show where I parked the scooter, and finally a link to the customization screen. Now if I swipe down on the lower half, like so, then I have access to open the scooter's trunk and unlock it through the app. In the upper left hand corner is the menu selection where we have access to different sections. It also indicates if the app is connected to the smart scooter via Bluetooth. As you can see, I'm not currently connected. Now the gear icon opens the settings. So first you can see we have app settings. Here I can toggle if I get GoGrow warning notifications, if I want to automatically pair to the scooter with Bluetooth, sync the customized settings automatically or manually push them when I change them, uh, launch the app automatically when it detects I'm near where I parked the scooter. It can reset tips and remove cards. That re-enables any cards or tips that uh, may have shown up on the home page. You may have seen these cards in my previous video that remind or warn me of certain issues like a low battery or the kickstand being down while trying to engage the engine. Uh, social network. Uh, do you want the app linked to your Facebook? Next is my garage which shows my license plate number and I've covered that up for obvious reasons. My account has personal information as well, which you can update. And finally, About, which gives you the app version and information legally section, and where you can manually check for any IQ system updates for the smart scooter. The smart scooter actually just recently received an update, and I saved the screenshots of what that looks like. So going back to the home page, let's check out our next section, the energy network. Here, the app will show my current location and the district I am in at the very top, along with all the go stations or go chargers nearby. Let it load up there. Scanning, checking. And there we go. Those are all the go stations and go chargers nearby. Now I can limit it to only look for one or the other, a GO station or a GO charger by selecting the ALL icon. If I select the battery, that will show me just GO stations nearby where I can swap the battery. If I go back and I select the plug, that will show me GO chargers. Those are places where maybe a small business, they've applied for a GO charger and GoGrow has sent them a charger. So when you go into the business, you can bring your batteries and plop them in the charger and it will recharge the batteries for you while you're at their business. So let's go back to all. Now at the bottom I can refresh the map. I can relocate my location and like so. I can zoom in again by hitting that relocate icon. Now if I select all list it will show me a list of go stations and go chargers in a particular area. I can also do a search for a location if I click the magnifying glass specifically type in an address there. But going back Click all list. So let's select a location. Let's go to Kaohsiung City, that's in the south. And we'll go to the Gushan District. Click that. And now it'll display the GO stations and GO chargers in that area. So let's select one. Let's see, how about the 7 Eleven Meijun store? So it showed the address there. It'll open up a map in Apple Maps so I can see where the location is along with the directions. So if I click directions, it would actually give me directions from where I'm located right now, which is in Taichung, <laughs> to Kaohsiung, which is a bit of a distance away. 
So let's go back to the Gogoro app and the energy network. Go back, back. If I select one of the Go stations, like such, below it will display the name of the station, its location, and if I click the turn arrow, it again will open up Apple Maps and give me directions to that location. Now if we go back and we look at the map here, you'll see there's the number 18 to the upper right hand corner of the Go station I selected. This indicates the number of batteries that are fully charged and available. Now in the past few months that I've been riding my GoGoRo, I haven't used the reserve battery function simply because every time I go to a GO station there are enough fully charged batteries available. However, I have read online of some folks who there are in Taiwan GoGoRo clubs, so a pack of people will travel on the weekends to a location and travel around and they may hit a GO station all at once and then after they leave an unsuspecting individual GoGo rider will go to a GO station and discover that all the batteries that are in the GO station are being charged because that large group just went by. I haven't had that uh, occur, however I have read that has happened to some individuals. So that does it for the energy network. Next up is the customize page. This is probably the most important and versatile part of the GoGo app. Here I can go through and customize different features of the smart scooter. So let's take a look. First up, we have colors for the dashboard. Now during the day, the dashboard LEDs are usually white for safety, and the colors only come on when the sensor detects low light. So our first customizable option is the standard Gogoro color that transitions from blue to green. The next is throttle, which will change the color as you apply throttle. Battery, the color will reflect the battery level. Personalized enables you to set the left and the right sides of the dashboard different colors. Or, see, you can change the left, it's blue, some green, I can do red, you know, yellow, or I can do one single color. Or I can change it back to dual. And at the top, you can see what those different colors look like. Loop, which is what I use, loops through all different color combinations. And finally, we have all day color, which is identical to personalized, but the dashboard is always in color, even during the day. Next is sound. I currently use slider, but I tend to change it every month just for fun. So let's go through and listen to a sample theme of each sound profile. Now again, these are just samples of themes, so you can get an idea of what the sounds of the GoGoRo may have, but you won't know exactly what the different sounds will be until you update the scooter. There are sounds for locking and unlocking the scooter, opening and closing the trunk, turning on and off the engine, putting the kickstand down, as well as the turn signal blinkers. One future feature I hope they will employ is enabling you to listen to all the sounds associated with that theme, so you have a better idea if a theme has the sounds you want even maybe mix and match them. Now when I ride, I use a full head helmet, so I can't see the dashboard unless I look down. So I use the sound of the blinkers to tell me if the blinker is on or off. Now although the smart scooter sensors will usually detect a turn and turn off the blinker, sometimes if it is a slight turn, it won't. And if the sound is too low because of the theme, I won't notice that the blinker is still on since I don't hear it. Another feature I know GoGoRo riders have requested is the option to turn off sounds completely, since some riders find the sound themes not fitting with their riding style at all. So next up in customization is the headlight delay. This is where I can adjust how long the headlights will stay on in seconds after I lock the GoGoRo scooter. Right now I have it set for 10 seconds. I could turn it off if I wanted to. After that we have auto lock. That adjusts the delay in seconds after you've turned off the motor that the Gogoro will automatically lock. 
So mine is set for 30 seconds. So after I've turned off the motor, the GoGoRo will stay unlocked for 30 seconds. After that, it will lock. Front and rear tires refer to the tire pressure monitoring system, which is a sensor that you can purchase and have inserted in your tires to monitor the tire pressure. I did that during my last maintenance check. So in the app, you can adjust at what PSI amount you want the app to notify you that you need to inflate the tires. So that's for the front tire and that one's for the rear tire. You can see that they recommend the front tire being inflated to 34 PSI and having the recommendation sent to 32. And for the rear tire, the PSI should be 38 and the tire pressure monitoring system, the TPMS, should be at 36. When I had my TPMS installed, the gentleman at the GoGoRo store recommended that I keep the alert down because he said the TPMS, the tire pressure monitoring system sensor, is very sensitive. So on to the next page. Regen is where you can adjust the amount of regenerative braking you want. Regenerative braking for the uninitiated is where when you let go of the throttle and begin coasting, the motor acts as a generator and uses the movement of the tires to generate electricity to recharge the battery. The creation of energy by the motor acting as a generator creates resistance and acts as a braking mechanism. Now I've coasted down entire hills before with regenerative braking on and gotten back several kilometers worth of energy, which was displayed to me on the dashboard. It is just so cool to know you are putting energy back into the battery, and I see it as a game to see how much energy I can save or put back into the battery by coasting. So if you have regenerative braking set high, you'll get more energy back when you coast and stronger braking when you let go of the throttle. On to the turn assist light. This enables you to adjust the lights on the lower body of the smart scooter. Directional will turn on the light on the same side as your turn signal when you engage it. Night means the lights will always be on when the sensor detects it's dark outside, which is what I use so I'm more noticeable at night. Breathing causes the lights to glow along with the same frequency as the breathing light, which is a customizable option for your brake light that we will see in the next page. Light patterns allow you to choose the pattern that will be displayed on the front LED lights and the rear brake lights when the scooter is locked and unlocked. So let's take a look at each one. Sweeper. Wink. And when I use beam, trunk just asks if you want to keep the scooter on when you open the trunk. If not, when you open the trunk, the scooter will automatically power off. I have mine set to off because usually when I open the trunk to get something out, I'm going to be leaving the scooter behind, so I don't need it to turn back on. On to our last page. We have our overspeed warning, which will produce a warning sound when the smart scooter is over the indicated speed or you can have it off. Mine's currently set to 60 kilometers per hour. Low speed is the same as over speed, but produces a sound when you are under a certain speed, typically to alert pedestrians or other vehicles. Mine is set to 25. Breathing light makes your front halo light and rear tail light look like the vehicle is breathing when you are stopped. Again, you can have this sync with the turn assist lights that we saw on the previous page. So that does it for the customized page and the customizable options for the GoGoRo Smart Scooter. So if we go back to our menu select screen, our next up is Diagnostics. On this page, the app will conduct a diagnostic of the Smart Scooter and check to ensure all components are operating properly. As you can see here, it checks the lighting system, the drivetrain, the connector, electronic control unit, smart key, other components, and tire pressure. If there is an error with any of these or detected a fault, I could click on it and it would tell me more information about what the error is. So after diagnostics, we have my ride status. My ride status displays some statistical information about your driving style. A lot of this information is recorded by the batteries and is updated to the app once you have performed a battery swap. The first thing we can see is the average speed based on your previous number of battery swaps. You can see I currently average around 26 kilometers an hour, usually because of city stop and go traffic. Now at the bottom, it displays the remaining battery level. I can also click to see where I park my scooter, brings up Apple Maps. Past mileage shows me my miles for each of the past few months I've owned the scooter, along with an average of all the months. And finally back on the My Ride status screen, we can see at the bottom right hand corner 
how many kilometers until I need to go in for another service check. Next up, max speed is just that. It displays my maximum speed I've reached with the GoGoRo based on the previous swaps. Mileage indicates how many kilometers I have traveled this month, not including my current battery riding mileage. As you can see, it says zero kilometers this month because it is June 2nd, and I haven't performed any battery swaps since the beginning of June. And CO2 saved is exactly that. How much CO2 in kilograms I have saved compared to using a comparable ICE or internal combustion engine scooter. Next up is my profile. Here I can see my badges, which are like achievements, along with make any adjustments to my energy plan. Bonus points to any Disney fans out there who can recognize my profile icon. So you can see I've been a go-go rower since February 6, 2017, which is when I picked up the scooter. And below are my achievements or badges. These are just for fun, and they can be shared on social media, like Facebook, and they alert you to certain achievements you have attained, like Trailblazer, if I click on that. That one's for reaching 800 kilometers total. And if I go back, Early Riser is for constantly getting up early to ride. There is a website, link provided below, that lists all of the known badges so far. It is in Chinese, but you can use Google Translate to get an idea of what badges there are. My plan enables me to change my energy plan. I can change my energy plan once a month without penalty. So that is very convenient if I know maybe during the summer I'll be riding more, so I need a higher plan. Or if I haven't been reaching the maximum number of kilometers for my plan, I can lower it to save money. If I have more than one Gogoro and I want to change a specific Gogoro's plan, I can select the license number choose that license plate number, and then choose that specific Gogoro's energy plan. So down below, I can click here, and this will give me the different energy plan options there are. These are all listed in New Taiwan Dollars. I'll have another video later on that breaks down the energy plan a bit more. Below the energy plan, I can also activate any special features, such as the sports mode, which I currently have enabled due to a promotional event they had for current GoGoRo owners, giving us a month of free sports mode use. Sports mode gives the engine more power, enabling faster acceleration and higher overall speed. Then below that, I can look up my bills for the past month, see if I have an amount due, what charges I have, and if it has been paid or not yet. I pay my bill by taking my phone to a convenience store, selecting that month's bill, and giving the phone to the clerk, who will scan the barcode, and then I pay at the convenience store. You can also pay via ATM at the GoGoRo store and by auto payment. Next up, we have online help, which just provides some additional information and acts like a little owner's manual to look up any questions you may have regarding the smart scooter. And finally, there is service. Service is where you can make or edit an appointment for servicing your GoGoRo. The app will actually automatically remind you it is time to schedule a service appointment when you are nearing time for a regular maintenance check, which you can see it did here for me a few months ago. So to make a service reservation, you would just select your service center. Then it's time to select a time slot. We'll select a date and then a time. And then you select the requested service, whether it's regular maintenance, tire change, brake pad change, or others. Confirm. And then below you have a place where you can write any notes that you want to give the service center. And then when you're done, you click reserve and you're all set to go. Now for any immediate concerns, you can always take your smart scooter to the store or call the service hotline. So that does it this time for the GoGoRo app. Again, if you have any questions or something you'd like to see me cover, leave a comment below and I'll try to cover it in the future. Until next time.